In this video, I'll walk you step by step through the process of creating a blog yourself. Now the blog that we're going to create today can not only be used for travel, it can also be for fashion, it can be for fishing, it can be for how to make money online, it can be a blog for various different reasons. Now I'm going to walk you through everything involved in setting up this blog. I'm going to show you how to add sliders into your homepage so that your blog posts rotate. Maybe your recent blog posts or your featured blog posts rotate for your viewers. I'll show you how to categorize your blog posts into the menu here. I will show you how to add photos with the blog posts on the homepage. I'll show you how to add a contact me page with a contact form. I'll show you how to add social media widgets and everything else you need to know in order to make your blog pretty. So let's get started walking through the steps I have laid out in order to make this. Here I have listed out the steps that we'll need to go through in order to make our blog and get our blog online. So the first thing that we're going to need to do in order to get our blog online is we're going to need to go out and actually get a domain name. So we're going to need to go out and register this and our domain name is just www.yourwebsite.com, mywebsite.com, anything like that. That's our URL. So that's what we're going to need to go get and that is going to be about $15 a year. And now there's no way around that sort of annual fee to have our domain name. All of the websites you see online pay this sort of annual fee. And one thing that you're going to want to think about when you register your domain name for your blog is what is your blog going to be about? Is it going to be a fashion blog? Is it going to be a travel blog? Is it going to be a make money online blog? You're going to want to think of that when you register your domain because it should be similar to each other. And the next thing that we want to do is we're going to need to go out and get hosting. Now web hosting is going to cost about $8 a month. Um, just like a domain name, there's no way around this sort of monthly fee. We're going to need to pay this fee to a web hosting company in order to stay online and keep our website hosted on their server so that when we update our blog and you know, keep our blog uh, content updated, it's updated on their server. Um, so, like I've listed here, hosting allows your website to be accessible on the internet. Now, the third thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to install WordPress. WordPress is probably the best content management system out there. I've found it to be the easiest and the most user-friendly tool. And what's great about WordPress as well is that all sorts of Fortune 500 companies are using the WordPress platform on their websites such as you'll see like CNN.com, Forbes.com, even artists such as Jay-Z and Katy Perry, they're all using WordPress. And once we get into this, you'll see how easy it is to use and how great the tool actually is. The next thing we want to do is we're going to want to go choose a website theme. And I know of a great theme that I personally think is incredibly attractive for blogs. So I will show you this theme once we get there. And WordPress has thousands of themes to choose from as well. And the next thing is we're going to be adding posts to our blog. We're going to add pages. I'm going to show you how to add widgets. And I'm also going to show you how to put ads on your blog so that once you start generating traffic to your blog, you can put ads on your blog and start generating some revenue. Um, once we've done this, we're going to be done. So let's get started here. The first thing we want to do is let's go get our domain name and get hosting. Now I've gone to HostGator.com. So if you just go to www.HostGator.com, you'll come up to a web hosting company that I've always used when I've set up my websites and I've set up my blogs. Um, and I've always had good success with them. Their support team has always been there for me when I've ever had any questions or anything like that. Um, and luckily it's a place that we can both register our domain and also get web hosting. So once you're at HostGator.com, we'll just want to click on the web hosting tab here. 
And we can see here that HostGator offers a lot of different web hosting plans. The web hosting plan that I usually go with is the baby plan here. Now I've usually always gone with the baby plan because this plan offers unlimited domains and it's uh, I feel a pretty decent price for this. Um, compared to the hashing plan which only offers one single domain for one hosting account. With the unlimited domains I can have one hosting account and I can create my own website, my own blog, my mom's blog, my friend's blog, and they can all be hosted under this one account that we'll set up. So, and I'll generally sign up for the monthly plan because I don't really like to be committed to a full year or anything like that. So I like to pay by month. And if we just click order now, we'll get to the order form here. So in this field, we'll want to register our domain name. So you'll want to just type in whatever domain name that matches your blog. So if you just type that in this field, it should come up and say whether it's available. So once you do that, you'll go down and you'll make sure that you have selected the baby plan. And also in this field, you'll see that HostGator actually offers 20% off to begin with. I actually use a coupon code that saves you 25% off. So this is what I use. And if you just come down to the coupon code field here and you type in my new blog 25. And this coupon right here will actually save you, like I said, 25% off rather than the 20% off. And now if you're gonna use HostGator and register a domain and get hosting with them anyways, I'd appreciate it if you would use this coupon code. It will, I mean, HostGator will pay me a small commission and this allows me to continue making these helpful tutorials. So let's make sure that we are now getting 25% off rather than the 20% off. And we'll need to enter a username and a security pin here. And also enter in our billing information. Now if you're outside of the US, HostGator also takes PayPal. So that is that. And we will want to make sure that these hosting add-ons are all unchecked. I always uncheck these because I think that they are not necessary. So, once we've done that, we can click I read and agree to the terms and conditions and create account. And after we click create account, we will get this thank you page. So, an email will be sent to the email that you registered with HostGator. And now this will usually take maybe two or three minutes to get this email. But I can go check my email now. So, And it looks like I do have an email from HostGator. So once you get this email from sales at HostGator.com, we'll click on this email. And we're going to want to click on your control panel here. So let's click this link. And we're getting to our cPanel login. So let's grab our username that we set up with them and also this password. So let's copy and paste that. Just type in my username, case, and my password there and click login. And once we get logged in here, let's get out of this. No, I'm fine, thanks. No thanks. And once we get here, we're going to want to actually install WordPress on our site. So let's go down to Software Services and click Quick Install right here. So let's click that. And here in the left menu, let's click on WordPress and continue and now let's make sure that this is the domain that we've just registered with HostGator and this is my domain creating a blog is easy and let's make sure to leave this field blank right here and I can type my admin email so case.gilbreth at yahoo.com 
and my blog title will be my travel blog. So just what you want to call your blog. Admin user case and case. Take a breath. And once, oops. Now let's click install now. And this may take a minute for WordPress to actually install on our website. Okay, now we get a congratulations. WordPress has been installed on your website. And once you get this notice here, it may actually take maybe two or three hours for WordPress to actually be installed on your website. So right now I'm going to take a break. And when I come back, we will finish setting our blog up. Okay, and by now, WordPress should be installed on our website. So what we need to do is we're going to need to grab the login information that they provided us here in Word, our WordPress. So we'll click on this link next to admin area right here. So let's click that. and they provide us with a username and password so my username is just case no need to copy that and I can grab this password so I'll copy that uh, username case password is that and I will log in okay now here we are in our dashboard and our dashboard is basically just the back end of our blog. So this is going to allow us to update our blog and keep all of our content fresh on our blog. So like I was saying before, I like to think of our dashboard being similar to like Microsoft Word in that it makes it incredibly easy how there is no coding involved and we just can, you know, create a new post, enter content in that post, save it and the post is live on our blog. So it's incredibly easy to, to use and I will walk you through this. Right now let's just take a look at how WordPress looks on our actual domain name that we've registered. So once we go to our site, my site is creatingablogiseasy.com. So we can see that this is nothing special at all here. This is the default theme of WordPress. So this is what we're going to be working with. Um, let's go back into our dashboard. Now, the first thing that I generally like to do when I log into the dashboard for the first time is I like to change my password to something I can actually remember. So we can do that. I'm sorry, click on users here in the left menu. And we will click edit. And let's type a new password here. So we will be able to remember our password. Okay. Update profile. Okay. Now that we've done that, the next thing that I always do is I will show you what I do. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but when you go to your domain name right now, there is no www in front of your URL. It disappears. Now I am really picky when it comes to how my website URL looks and luckily there's a way to fix this in our dashboard. So if we go back into settings here in our left menu in our dashboard we'll see WordPress address URL and site address URL right here. So let's just click right here and type www dot and go down to the next field and type the same www dot. Once we've done that we come down click save changes and we'll need to log in again
Oh, sorry, my username is Case, not Admin. Where? Okay. Another login. Let's go to our live site and see if it changed. And it did, in fact, change. So we have our www there, which is great. So let's keep on trucking here. The next thing I want to do here is I want to install a theme on the blog. Now I know of a really attractive theme that I like to use for blogs. It's a really popular theme for any kind of blog. Today I'm making a travel blog, but it can be used for fashion blogs, it can be used for fishing blogs, it can be used for you know, how to make a money online type blogs. So I will show you the blog I like. Um, let's go to appearance, themes, and let's click install themes up here. I believe it's called uh, Simple Catch. So if I just search that, yes, here's the theme that I like right here. And this is what we'll be working with. So if we click install now on that theme, Simple Catch, and then we'll click activate. Okay, and we have a new theme on our website. Let's go to our website and refresh and see the new theme. All right, so here is the new blog theme for our web page. Now, let me take a look at the steps that we've walked through so far in this video. So we have gone and registered a domain name. We've done that. We've gone and got hosting. We've done that. We have done our very easy one-click install, and we've set up WordPress on our blog. And next, we have chosen a theme for our blog. So we've got that installed. The last things we'll be doing is basically making our blog look pretty. So I plan on showing you how to add posts on your blog, how to add pictures to your blog, how to add multiple pages on your blog, um, how to add useful widgets to your blog on the side here. And I'm also going to show you how to add advertisements on your blog. So when you start generating traffic to your blog, you'll be able to actually generate some revenue, which is great. So now let's go ahead and start adding posts to our blog. And we're going to want to go up here and click on Posts in the left menu. And we have this default post here that WordPress gives us. Let's go ahead and just trash that. So click Trash on Hello World. And let's add a new post. So, And since I'm making a travel blog, I'm going to have this post relate to my trip to Argentina. So I will title it Gorgeous, Gorgeous Argentina. And since I'm just serving as an example for you, I've just grabbed some lorem ipsum text here. And you can just paste that again, just to give you an idea on how to actually add posts to your blog. And you'll probably actually want to add a picture to your posts as well to make the site look pretty. Um, I will show you how to do that now. So let's click on Add Media right here. And I'm going to select a file from my computer. So I'm going to select this Argentina image. And I'm just going to insert that into post. And let's edit this picture as well. So I want no alignment on our link URL right here. Let's click none. So that when someone clicks on the picture, it won't just pull up a bigger picture of that image on our site. To do that, let's click update and let's click publish 
Okay, and let's go back to our live site and refresh it. Okay, now we can see that we do have our first post right here, but it does look a little odd how it hasn't added the picture to our front page here. And of course we can fix that, so let's go back into our dashboard and I will show you how. We will go down to the bottom of our post and we need to click on Set Featured Image. So let's click on the, the image we've just added and let's click on Set Featured Image. Okay, and let's click Update. Okay, and let's go back to our live site and let's click refresh. And we can now see that we have a thumbnail of our post. So we can click on that and we can see that we go to our actual post, our actual blog post here. So this will be the content that you'll write on your blog for this post here. And we can go back. You can see we have our live site. And let's go ahead and I'll show you how to add one more post below that. So I'll go to our dashboard again. Let's click on posts. And we're going to click add new post. So let's add a new blog post here. My next picture will be from my Stockholm trip since it's a travel blog. So I love Stockholm will be the title. And then I'll go ahead and paste in this text to serve as an example for you adding your actual real content. Now, I also want a picture in this post. So I'll do the same thing. I'll just go to add media right here. And I want to actually upload a new file. So I'll select a file here. And here it is, Stockholm open okay and let's insert this into post there's our picture and let's go ahead and click on this picture again and edit the picture oh, edit image and I want to click on none here so that when you actually, like I said before, when you click on the image, it doesn't actually just pull up a bigger image on a different page of your of your blog. So let me, oh, let's see, advanced settings here as well. And everything looks good here. Let's click update again. And I want to publish that. Let me go back to our live site. And we'll refresh our live site. And we can see that we have a new blog post here. But just like before, we don't have the picture that we've loaded into the post showing up on our main page. So to do that again, let's go back to this post. And we'll set featured image. So let's click set featured image and let's click on the image that we want to show for that blog post. Click set featured image and we will click update. And let's see if it worked. So refreshing our live site. And we do. We have two new blog posts so I hope that you're now kind of getting an understanding on the process of going in and adding a new uh, blog post. And now that you know the process of adding new blog posts on your blog, I'm going to go ahead and add um, a few more blog posts so that my example blog has more content on it um, and you can relate to it more. So for time reasons, I'm going to go ahead and do this um, real quick, but I'm going to go through the same process that I've just shown you adding these blog posts. But before I do that, since I am creating a travel blog right here, and you may be creating a blog where pictures are going to be very important for you, I do want to show you how to actually make the photo bigger on your blog post. So to do that, 
let's go back into our dashboard and let's go ahead and click on add media again in the blog post and let's click on one of the images that we've already loaded into WordPress. So I've clicked on this image that I would like to have actually a little bigger. Um, we will see here on the right side that it says medium right here. So I actually want this to be full size on the blog post. So I'm going to click full size here and then I'm going to click insert into post. So we see that that image, has had, that image has been added to the post. I'm going to delete the smaller image. And I'm going to click Update. OK, so the bigger, pic the bigger picture has been added to our blog post. Let's go ahead and refresh our live site. And we see that there is a much bigger picture on the site which looks much better, especially since I'm making a travel photo and pictures are going to be much more important for my, my viewers. Okay, so the next time I come back, I will have a few more blog posts and we will get started making our sliders and our featured Im our image up at the top of our website. So let me make these blog posts and I will be back shortly. And I am back. And like I said, I just added a few more blog posts and I went through the exact same process that I just walked you through. Um, you see I've added a few of these posts here. Um, to get the picture here, I just set each one as the featured image for them to appear here. So now that I have a bit more content to work with on the blog, let's um, get our featured image and get our sliders implemented up here at the top of our blog. Okay, and to do this, let's go back into our dashboard. And we want to go to Appearance. So let's click on Appearance. And let's go to Theme Options, I believe. Yes. And let's click on Featured Post Slider right here. And Add Slider Options, we click here. And the number of slides. So this is asking us how many slides we want to actually be in our slider at the top of our blog. So I have one, two, three, four, five blog posts. So I can have five blog posts in my slider. And it's asking us for a featured slider post number. So I can show you, let me save that I have five. I can show you what this is asking for right now. So we want to go back into our posts. And let, let me click on wild kangaroos. What this is asking for is this number at the top of our URL. So if you go up to your URL, you're going to want to pull whatever this number says. Post equals 27 for me. So I'm going to write down 27 because I want that in my slider. And let's go ahead and see if we can get this up in our slider. So let me go back to theme options and let's go back to featured post slider. Add slider options. And let's first see if, let me put one here, and let's first see if we can get the wild kangaroo is to show in the slider. So we'll put post 27 and let's click save. And let's see what that did on our live site. So let me go back to the site and let's refresh. Okay, now we have a featured image at the top of our blog. And we want each of our blog posts that we've added to be in this slider. So let me show, show you what I mean. Let's go back to our dashboard. And let's pull the other post numbers. So Sydney Opera is 24. And we can see a really easy way to do this. Let's click back on posts. 
And we can see just IDs here. So 27, 24, I'm going to pull 19. I'm going to pull 9. So I'm writing these down. And I'm going to pull 5. And I go back to Appearance, Theme Options, Feature Post Slider, Slider Options. And now that we have five blog posts we want in our slider, let's click Save. Let's go back to it and let's add the post number. So 24 for me, 19, 9, and 5. And let's click Save. Option saved. Let's go back to our live site. Let's refresh. And we can see that we have added our blog post pictures into our sliders as the featured blog posts on our blog. So this is pretty cool. It is becoming a much more attractive blog. Now you'll see that the pictures in this slider actually aren't filling up this entire section here. And there is a way we can fix that. So what we'll need to do to get that looking the best it can possibly look is go back into our dashboard and we're actually going to need to download a plugin for this. So let's go to our plugins right here in our left menu. Click on it. Now WordPress has thousands of different plugins that developers add that basically make uh, the WordPress content management system the best it can be. So for this particular need that we have, we want to download what's called the post thumbnail editor. So let's search that plugin. Post thumbnail editor. And this is the one that I've used before and it has worked very well for me. So I'm going to install this. And yes, I want to install that. Okay. And let's activate the plugin. Okay, now that we have that, let's go back to our posts. And now that we have the post thumbnail editor plugin, we want to go into our posts. So let's scroll down in the post and we want to click on post thumbnail editor that now appears as a link right here. So let's click that. And let's click on slider and let's click featured. And if you get this same caption right here, just disre disregard it because it, it does not relate to what we're doing right now. So let's crop this photo and it's right there for our slider. And that looks good. Just like that. And crop. And since we're concerned about the slider right here, we want to save this. So let's click on the save icon. And I believe that will be saved now. So let's go and refresh. And we can see that the photo now takes up the entire slider. Looking good. Let's go ahead and update the rest of our photos so that they take up the full amount of space in the top slider area. So let's go back to our posts. And let's just go through each one right now. So we've got this post. Let's go down post thumbnail editor. We want to click on featured and slider. And let's crop this. Uh, that looks good. Crop. And let's save the slider. Save. So that should be saved. Let's go back and continue with the rest of our posts. So we're on Thailand. Post thumbnail editor. 
let's click on slider featured and let's crop this photo that looks good crop save the slider here that should be updated as well let's go back to our posts and I've already done wild kangaroos this is the last one that I need to do post thumbnail editor slider featured and let's crop this again crop save and we should be good with our sliders so let's refresh our main site and let's make sure that each of the images takes up the full amount of space and it looks like they do fantastic so our website our blog that is is really coming along and starting to look like a real actual travel blog for me now if you're developing a fashion blog or a fishing blog or any other kind of blog I hope your blog is looking as great as the one that I'm making is and the next thing we want to do is let's go back to our posts now eventually you're probably going to have a lot of different posts on your blog and you're going to want some way to categorize your blogs to group different blog posts together in one and create a menu item so that your visitors can come check out different categories on your blog so to do that we want to go to posts and let's go to categories and for me since I'm creating a travel blog I'm going to create different areas of the world that I have visited so I'm gonna create a new category as South America I'm also going to create Europe as a category and add new category and I'm going to create Asia add new category and finally I will create the Australia category so add this so we have a lot of different categories here now let's go to appearance and menus I'm sorry let's go back to posts and let's make sure that each post is in the proper category so you can go to your posts and click on quick edit on the posts and you can see that now that there are categories that you can group your posts together so for wild kangaroos I'm going to select Australia I'm going to uncheck uncategorized click update for Sydney Opera I'm going to uncheck uncategorized and I'm going to click on Australia click update Thailand is in Asia so I'm going to update that Stockholm is in Europe so I will update that and finally Argentina is in South America so I'll update that so now that we have our blog post our blog post categorized let's go check out our live site and we can see that there are no menu tabs uh, that were loaded on our page right here so I'm going to show you how to add tabs now so we want to go to appearance menus and we want to enter a menu name here so this we can just title as a menu click create menu and primary menu we want to select menu here let's save that and we want to add the categories that we've just added into our menu so let's select these and let's click add to menu 
All right, save menu. Let's go back to our live site and see if it worked. So let's refresh. And we, have, we now have menu tabs in our menu, which is great. So let's see if they work. Let's click on Australia. And we see that we have our two posts from Australia. South America should have our Argentina post. Europe should have our Stockholm post. So I think you're probably getting the hang of this. Let's go back to our home page. And we need to create a home menu on our site. So we can see on our live site right now that we don't have a home menu tab so that our visitors can easily get back to our home page. Now we don't have to have that, but I generally do like to have that. Um, I can show you how to add that. Um, let's go back into our dashboard. And we can see this custom links right here. What we need to do here is just type in our URL name, our domain name. So for me, that's just creating a web, sorry, creating a blog is easy.com. Okay. And I'm going to title this home. So that's our label. Add that to menu. And now since we want our home tab to generally appear first in our menu, we can just drag that and put it at the top here. And let's save menu. Okay. Let's check out our live site. And we can see we have a home tab right here. All right. The next thing I want to show you is how to add pages onto your blog. Now, pages are different than just blog posts because the pages aren't categorized as blog posts, obviously, and it's going to be important for you to have maybe a contact me um, page on your site so your visitors can contact you from your site. So let me show you how to make that. We will just need to go to pages right here and add new. So I'm going to title this contact me. And you can just write anything here. Please contact me with the form below. And let's click publish. Now you can see here that I've said contact me with the form below. We're going to actually need to go install a plugin in WordPress. We need to get a um, contact uh, form, actually. So we'll go to plugins. We'll go to add new. And I know of a good contact form that I have always used, and that is called contact form 7, I believe. Let's search that. And contact form 7. And here it is. So let's click install now. Okay. And we'll activate this plugin. And plugin activated. And you'll now see that we now have a new tab in our menu in the dashboard called contact. Let's click on that. And all we need to do here is just copy, copy this short code. So let's copy that. Let's go back to the page that we've just added. Contact me. Let's click on that. And let's click on the text tab right here. And we can paste in that short code that we've just copied. And let's click update. Okay. And let's go to our live site. Okay, and we can see that that page was not added into our menu. And that's because we have to go manually add that into the menu. So let's go back to appearance. And let's go to menus. And we want to 
add this contact me page that we've just added. So let's check that. Click add to menu. And perfect. We generally want that to be last in our menu tab. So I'm going to save menu and go back to the live site. I'm going to refresh. And we now have contact me in our menu. So it's looking like a real blog now. It's exciting. Um, let's click on contact me and see if our contact form was added into the page. And it was not added into the page. So let's see what we did wrong. Let's go back to our pages. Click on pages. And let's edit this contact me page. I think I did not copy enough of the short code here. So let's go back to our contact tab here. And let's make sure to copy this entire thing. Copy. Let's go to our pages. And let's try this one more time. Yes, I did not copy all of it. So make sure when you're grabbing that short code for your contact form that you actually copy the entire short code. It's very easy not to, have you, as you've just seen. So let's update that. And let's check one more time and see if this was added. And we have a contact form now. So now visitors can come to, you, to your blog and they can contact you directly. So they'll fill out this form, they'll fill this email out, and you'll get an email to your account with their message. Okay. And some of the last things that I want to show you how to do are that I want to show you how to remove some of these widgets and add some very useful widgets, I think, to have in a blog. So let's go back into our dashboard. And actually, the first thing I want to show you how to do is how to add links to your social media profiles. And to do this, you want to go to Appearance, Theme Options here in the dashboard and you'll want to come over here and click on social links. So to do this, you just want to put the URL of your Facebook profile here, the URL of your Twitter page, Google+, YouTube, um, LinkedIn, all of these social media sites. Once you do that, you'll click save, and a little icon will show up at the top of the page right, right here. And those will link people over to your social media profiles, which I think is going to be very beneficial if you're starting a blog. Now let's take a look at our widgets. So for widgets, we want to go to Appearance and click on Widgets. And if you're not familiar, these are, are called widgets. So on the right side of the page, that's Recent Posts, Recent Comments, Archives, Categories. These are all widgets that we can take away or add in our dashboard. So we can see here that these are the widgets on our live site. So I want to remove recent comments, archives, categories, meta. I want to have a search feature on the blog and recent posts to the side. So let's refresh our site. And we can see that those are the two widgets that we now have on our live site. I also like to have a social media widget to the side over here and to do that WordPress has some great social media widgets and I will actually download and install the YouTube subscribe widget so I will search YouTube subscribe and can search plugins and there are several different widgets here. Now a good frame of reference when choosing a, a new plugin is to look at the reviews. So to look at the stars here and see how other people are rating the widget. So I will choose this widget. So I'll install YouTube subscribe widget. Okay. And we'll activate that plugin. 
And if we go back to Appearance, Widgets, we will see that there's now a YouTube widget here. We want to pick this up and actually drag it to the side here. So I can enter in my username, Case Guildbreath. And if you aren't already subscribed to me on YouTube, please do subscribe and find me on, on YouTube. And we can save that. And let's go back to our live site and refresh. And we see that we have a widget here to the side. And now, like I said, WordPress has thousands of different plugins that developers have put into WordPress to make it just a better content management system. So if you're interested in having a Facebook widget to the side or a Twitter widget to the side, it will be in the plugins in WordPress. So you can certainly find those. Now this is coming to the end of how to make a blog. So I'm glad that you came here. The very last thing that I want to show you is I want to kind of explain to you how you can add advertisements to your website to your blog so that you can start generating revenues. Now you want to start doing this once you've built up a subscriber base and you've built up a lot of visitors to your blog so you have some decent traffic. And once you have that, you'll want to actually go to AdSense. So this is google.com slash AdSense. Um, and this is so easy to do. You go to the site and you sign up and you write down um, kind of your blog and the nature of your blog and it will give you a link code that you can use on your website and you'll just paste that code into your widgets here. So once you get that code from AdSense, you will grab this text widget and pull it over to the side and you just paste it, paste it into this widget. So It'll give you an HTML code and you simply just paste that in, just like this. And you can generate anywhere from five cents to $10 for a click there. So it can really add up quick. So you've made it to the end of my video on how to make a blog. And I hope that this video has been very useful for you and that you're able to construct a fantastic, gorgeous looking blog. And if you have any further questions or help you know, need help walking you through the process, please feel free to contact me via email, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I really look forward to seeing you again.